Now fifth position, this is gonna be controversial, but I got Arsenal. I got Arsenal here next season because Now with the Premier League season about to start in a week or two, I figured it'd be the perfect time to drop my 2023-24 English Premier League table predictions. This is gonna be based on my knowledge of football and pretty much what I think or how I think these teams are gonna do next season. Let's get right into it. So starting right at the bottom in 28th place, we're gonna have Luton Town. Now, honestly, I say this because just simply based on the size of the team, I mean, compared to most other Premier League teams, this team is a pretty small team. I mean, you can tell from the stadium alone, but I haven't seen too much um, recruiting that would um, make me change my mind on the team's quality. They've made a couple signings, but they haven't made any real signings that would make me think that they could shake things up in a Premier League and survive it. So, unfortunately, Luton Town is going to be my first team going down. Now, in 19th place, we've got Wolverhampton Wanderers. Now, I got Wolves in 19th place because this is a team that have lost a lot of good players recently. A lot of their, um, you know, their experienced players walked out of the team. Ruben Neves, Raul Jimenez, Adama Traore, the list goes on, Leon de Donker. Like, they've lost pretty much the core of the team, I'd say. So I honestly don't see them making it past another season of the Premier League. Although they have an amazing coach, the team just haven't done enough recruiting to make up for the losses they have in their squad. So unfortunately, I see the coach getting sacked midway through the season and this team struggling for the rest of the season and getting relegated. In 18th place, I've got Sheffield United. Now, this was a team that actually did pretty good um, a few seasons ago when they got back into their Premier League. But unfortunately, this time, I don't see too many positivities. Still a pretty solid team. They did well to get promoted, but they've over the summer, they've lost pretty much a lot of their main players. I think they lost um, in Diaye to Olympi Marseille. I don't know how if I said that name right, but I think he was a key player for them last season in the championship. And to lose him in their attack is probably gonna be a huge blow for next season, unless they do some smart recruiting, get some nice players in on the cheap. I don't see this team surviving very long in the Premier League. So they're gonna be 18th place. Let's move on. In 17th place is gonna be Nottingham Forest. Now I got Nottingham Forest surviving the drop because I think, honestly, last season was a bit shaky, but they did show that I have a proven Premier League goal scorer in Taiwo Awunini. So I can see them, honestly, him chipping a couple more goals next season and helping them survive the drop. In 16th place, we got Crystal Palace. Now, this is a team that usually has a history of, you know, always making it to 40 points and always surviving in the mid-table. But this season, I feel like they might struggle a bit. They've lost their marquee man in Wilfred Zaha. And there's also, um, you know, rumors of Michael Elise also possibly leaving as well. So if they lose that much power in their attack, they're really not going to have that many options. Only player I can think of is probably Ibarichi Eze. That's going to be their main man for next season. Their defense is all right, but I don't see it doing too well next season with the amount of losses they've had in their squad this summer. So unfortunately, they're going to be 16th on the table. Moving on in 15th place, I've got Fulham FC. Now, I put Fulham here, even though they had an amazing season last season. But honestly, I don't see them replicating it. I feel like that was probably the first season syndrome. They just had a bit of luck and they capitalized on teams like Chelsea and Liverpool having pretty poor seasons. So honestly, I don't see them doing this again next season, especially if they lose Mitrovic or their coach to um, you know Saudi Arabia. With this, it's gonna be a huge blow to them. So I don't see them doing as well as they did last season. So 15th. In 14th place, I got Bournemouth because they had a pretty good season last year and I feel like they've also done some pretty decent transfers over the past two seasons. So I see their talent holding them up for another season. I doubt they're gonna have the second season syndrome and get relegated because this is honestly a pretty decent squad. It reminds me of their team under Eddie Howe a few seasons ago. 
But Bournemouth's going to be a solid team. I don't know if they're going to make it past the next season, but this season I see them having a comfortable mid-table position. And in 13th place, I've got Everton. Now, this is a team that had a pretty woeful season last year. Like, god damn, that was a terrible season for them. Almost got relegated. They are just lucky they didn't get relegated. But honestly, this year, I could see them having a more steady season. It's not going to be a great season. Like, the team's still pretty trash, even though they made a few um, recruitments that are not bad. But I see them having a pretty decent season on the Sean Dyche. Nothing too crazy, but it's not going to be as scary as last season where they're like scared the whole time that they might actually get relegated. So Everton in 13th place. Now in 12th place, I've got Brentford FC. Now Brentford also had a pretty good season last season, almost challenging for Europe. But with the loss of their main man, Ivan Tony. I think that they're probably gonna suffer a lot because he did put in a lot of work for the team last season. Like, Loki, one of the best players in the whole Premier League last season, but unfortunately, you know, circumstances happen and unfortunately he's out for a while for them. So honestly, I see this affecting them pretty badly. They might even do worse than 12th, but I have them in 12th position. Moving on to our 11th position, I've got Burnley FC. Now this is one of the only teams that got promoted that I have surviving the drop because I think this is a pretty solid team. They pretty much cleared out the um, championship last season in the champions. And with Vincent Company, I see a pretty solid defense for next season. Even though they don't have their main men from last season like Ian Matson and Christian Pella, I still see them having a pretty solid season. Honestly, I'm not a biggest fan of their recruiting they've done this summer, but I just have a feeling Vincent Company is going to do some good work for them in the Premier League, and hopefully we can help them survive the drop. Now, moving on to 10th position, we've got West Ham United. Now, this is actually the only team on the list so far at the time of recording that have made zero signings. Even though they just had pretty much the fucking world transfer fee for Declan Rice, they still haven't spent any of that money. Unless they spend that money wisely in the coming few weeks or days, honestly, I don't see them getting past 10th in the Premier League. They had a pretty woeful season last year because of the European competition they were in. But although credit to them, they did actually go all the way to win it. But this season is the same deal. They're still in Europe again in an even harder league this time in the Europa League. So I can see this affecting their season again. Hopefully they probably sack Moyes halfway through the season and save their season. But without that, I don't see them making it anywhere past. Now in ninth position, we've got Brighton Albion. Now Brighton was a pretty decent team last season with a lot of breakout stars. Even their coach was a breakout star. They had Mitoma, Evan Ferguson, a lot of decent players, Moises Caicedo. But this season with the loss of players like Levi Colwell and possibly um, Caicedo to Chelsea and McAllister going to Liverpool, this team is a team that has been a little depleted a little bit, but I'm putting them in ninth position because of their coach. I think the Zerbi is an amazing coach and it's probably going to do magic again for them this second season and somehow help them still be competitive. So I see them you know, having a comfortable ninth position. It's not going to be as crazy as last season, but it's going to be a decent ninth. Now in eighth position, I've got Aston Villa. Now this is a team that's on the rise right now. They've had pretty good summer, pretty good signings. I can't lie, I'm going to be honest. but. With the competition they're in next season, they've got Europe to play in as well as the Premier League. I feel like this is going to have an effect on them, even though they have an amazing boss in Unai Emery. I just feel like that European um, competition, you know, that strain, it's just going to have an effect on the team week in, week out. They're not going to be able to, you know, have those results that they had towards last season when they had no Europe to worry about. So I feel like that's going to affect them just a little bit. So I have them in eighth position. Moving on to 7th position, we've got Newcastle United. Now this one is going to be a bit controversial because people think Newcastle are all the way at the top right now. But honestly, they're a team that is pretty paper thin in terms of squad depth. Plus playing in the Champions League next season, I feel like they're probably going to get cooked. Absolutely cooked. They've made a few good signings. Sandro Tonali for 70 mil was pretty good, but I feel like what they needed most was probably some more experience in that team. And Tonali is a pretty young player. I don't think he's going to be able to step up to that level that they need for the Champions League and the Premier League. 
So I do see them pretty suffering pretty bad. I feel like they're gonna probably crash out of Europe. I feel like they might possibly crash out of Europe, but Eddie Howe is a great coach, so I still have them in seventh position. Moving on to sixth position, now it gets spicy, and I've got Tottenham Hotspurs. I got Tottenham in this position because they got no European games to worry about next season, and they're pretty much gonna be coasting in the Premier League. And I feel they're gonna have a pretty good season. It's not going to be the greatest season, especially if they lose players like Harry Kane. And overall, I feel like it's going to be a decent season for them. Sixth position isn't bad for a team with a new coach that's relatively new to the Premier League. So I feel like they're probably going to be challenging and, you know, disturbing the big boys a little bit. But not too much to push for the Champions League, unfortunately. Now, fifth position. This is going to be controversial, but I got Arsenal. Now, I got Arsenal here next season because, mainly because of the Champions League. Now, Arsenal have shown that they're not very good in European competitions, bro, let's be honest. And I feel like they're probably going to get cooked next season. I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm playing. But honestly, Arsenal have made a lot of great signings this season. Kai Havers, Declan Rice, Julian Timber. These are absolute great marquee signings, but... Unfortunately, with the competitions they're going to be having next season and how competitive their team is right now, honestly, I see them low-key kind of collapsing and dropping out of the top four. They're going to be competitive the whole season, but the strain of the Champions League, especially if they make it a bit far, is going to be weighing on them throughout the whole season and towards the end. So I feel like they might just crash out and end up in fifth position. Now, moving on in fourth position, I'm going to have Chelsea FC. Now, no bias, although I am a Chelsea fan, I think this is probably a pretty realistic um, goal for next season. The main reason being that we have no European football. And you know what happens when Chelsea have no European football. Last time we won the Premier League. This time, I'm not going to say that we're going to do the same, but... I feel like it's gonna be a pretty good season. New coach, new players. It feels like a brand new Chelsea. Hope see a lot of players having a pretty good breakout season, hopefully. And honestly, a comfortable fourth position for Chelsea. Now moving on to third position, we've got Liverpool. And I say Liverpool for third position because I feel like their attack is absolutely insane next season. Although they lost a bit of depth in the midfield with players like Henderson and Fabinho and Milner leaving, I feel like the recruitment was pretty good. Even though there might not be too many defensive recruitment right now, maybe they signed Romeo Lavia and that might help a little bit. But honestly, I feel like the defense is the only thing that's going to be a bit shabby for next season. Their attack's probably going to be super elite, especially with the fact that they've only got um, pretty much you know Europa League to worry about. So they're probably going to be rotating players and stuff like that. So I see them having a pretty comfortable season. Chelsea and Liverpool both had a pretty disastrous season, even though theirs wasn't as bad as Chelsea's. But hopefully this season, both teams can bounce back and get back into the top four. Now in second position, Manchester United, man. Manchester United, honestly, because I feel like they've got pretty good recruitment this season and they got a pretty decent coach as well. So, you know, the proof's in the pudding. I feel like they had to have a pretty good season. Had a great season last season, honestly. But I feel like this season is probably going to be another one for the Premier League where Eric Ten Hag is going to show that he's pretty cut out for this league and he's going to be able to challenge Pep a little bit. So, it's not going to be easy as last season for a Premier League team. So I feel like Manchester United are going to be one of those teams challenging up there for the Premier League title. Now, number one on our list, pretty obvious, Manchester City. Now, how could I say they were not going to win the Premier League? They literally won the treble last season, showed themselves to be the greatest team, almost won the quadruple, you know what I'm saying? Like, show themselves to be pretty much the best team in Europe right now, in the world, pretty much. So... Honestly, I see them coasting to another one. It's not going to be as easy as last season. I see, I'm see. i going to be predicting a four-team horse race this season. Maybe Arsenal might get in there as well, try to make it a five-team. But honestly, this is going to be a pretty good season for Manchester City. They're probably still going to win the league at the end of the season just because of the quality of players they've got in their team. Manchester City, first place. Now that's all for my predictions. Comment down below what you think or comment down your own predictions down below. Feel free to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys for more videos. And I'm out.